Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aleykum selam ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. Hey, quit laughing at my glasses. I'm trying to see which ones work better. Aleykum selam ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. I personally don't like either one of them. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته مبينة. أوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته أليشة. أوكي. Um, we finished off yesterday dealing with the issue of the things that nullify one's wudu. The things that nullify one's wudu. Today, we're going to move to the rulings connected to al-ghusl. Jazakallahu khairan. My brother, Nakir. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, man. I don't know what's wrong with that girl. The ghusl. And the ghusl is the complete bath where a person has to wash his or her body in totality. عرفت مما سبق أحكام الطهارة من الحدث الأصغر ونواقضها فكنت بحاجة إلى أن تعرف أحكام الطهارة من الحدث الأكبر جنابة كان أو حيضا أو نفاسا وهذه الطهارة تسمى بالغسل بدم الغين وهو استعمال وهو استعمال الماء في جميع البدن على صفة مخصوصة يأتي بيانه. So we've come to this point. We know how to purify ourselves from minor ritualistic impurity, and we know what nullifies it. So now it is upon us to learn what first and foremost necessitates a complete body washing and how to go about doing so, whether it is from sexual defilement, a menstrual cycle, or post natal bleeding postnatal bleeding this uh, particular classification of tahara is called al ghusl al ghusl and you put a dhamma on the rain for those of you who know Arabic, or who are able to read Arabic.
and it is done so by using water using water and putting water over your whole body in a specific manner and we're going to come to that wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh shadeed wa dalilu ala wujubihi qawlu allahi ta'ala wa in kuntum junaban fattahharu and the proof for the obligation is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever we say the statement of Allah, we're talking about the Quran. Unless we specify hadith Qudsi or something like that. But when we say the statement of Allah, we're talking about a verse from the Quran. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh lisha. And this particular verse is in Surah Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 6. فَقَدْ ذَكَرُوا أَنَّ الْغُسْلَ مِنَ الْجَنَابِتِ كَانَ مَعْمُولًا بِهِ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَةِ وَهُوَ مِنْ بِقَايَاء دِينِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ فِيهِمْ And it has been mentioned that the ghusl or the washing was something that was done. It was something that was done even in the pre-Islamic times or the days of Jahiliyyah, the days of Al-Jahiliyyah. It's another term. Remember that term, Al-Jahiliyyah. The book of poetry from Imam al-Shafi'i. Which book of poetry? I may have it. And it is from that which remain from the deen of Abraham, the religion of Abraham. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The things which necessitate the ghusl are six. And if one of them from amongst the six happens to occur, then it is a must that the Muslim make a complete ghusl to wash his whole body. A complete ghusl. Ah, okay, well, if you find out, let me know. أهدهما وأهدها خروج المني من مخرج من مخرجه من الذكر أو أنثى ولا يخلو إما أن يخرج في حالة اليقظة أو حال النوم فإن خرج في حال اليقظة اشترط وجود اشترط وجود اللذة بخروجه فَإِنْ خَرَجَ بِدُونِ اللَّذَّةِ لَمْ يُوجِبِ الْغُسْلِ So the first one is the first one is the exiting or we can just simply say ejaculation. Ejaculation. Whether it is from a male or female. Male or female. And this is whether the person is, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, whether the person is sleep or awake. Whether the person is sleep or awake. For if something was to come out, while this person was sleeping, then the condition, or I'm sorry, while this person was uh, awoke or awake, then the condition would be desire. The presence of desire. And if it was to happen without desire, then the ghusl would not be 
um, mandatory, would not be obligatory. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. كالذي يخرج بسبب مرض أو عدم إمساك وإن خرج في حال النوم وهو ما يسمى بالاحتلاء وجب الغسل مطلقا لفقد إدراكه فقد لا يشعره لا لا يشعر باللذة فالنائم إذا استيقظ ووجد أثر المني وجد عليه الغسل وجب عليه الغسل فإن احتلم ولم يخرج منه منه مني ولم يجد له أثرا لم يجد عليه الغصن وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته أنيسة Okay Now if this person was to be asleep then this would be what is known as a wet dream This is something known as a wet dream and in this case, the person has to make a ghusl. He has to make a ghusl. Even if the person doesn't feel this particular desire. So the one who is sleeping, if he wakes up and he finds the effects of it, then this person has to make a ghusl. And if the person has a wet dream or if a wet dream occurs and nothing comes out he doesn't see or feel anything or no effects from it then this person doesn't have to make a hustle so we're talking about the one who has or who has uh, ejaculated whether being awoke in a state of uh, awakeness or sleep if a person was to do this uh, with desire while being awake, then that person has to make ghusl. But if it was something that was to just come out, then this person wouldn't have to make a ghusl. And they mentioned from some sort of sickness or uh, without um, having um, entered upon any action. And the one who's sleeping, if he was to have a wet dream, then without a doubt, this person has to make a ghusl because they don't know what occurred while they were sleeping. But if the person has a dream, for example, and wakes up and doesn't see any traces or remnants of ejaculation, then this person doesn't have to make ghusl. Number two. Min mujibat al-ghusli ilaj al-dhakri fil faraj ولو لم ولو لم يحصل إنزال الحديث الذي وراه مسلم وغيره عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا جلس بين شعبها الأربع ثم مس الختان ثم مس الختان الختان فقد وجب الغسل فيجب الغسل على الواطئ والموطوء بالعلاج ولو لم يحصل إنزال لهذا الحديث والإجماع أهل العلم على ذلك. The second one is the second thing that um, makes it obligatory upon the one to perform a ghusl is the uh, penetration. We'll say penetration. Now, this penetration between a man and a woman, whether it's full and complete or even the two circumcised uh, parts touching. If the two circumcised parts touch, then it necessitates a ghusl, even if there's no ejaculation, even if nothing comes out. As long as these two parts touch, then the ghusl is mandatory. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the authority of a Muslim and other than him, if he sits between the four limbs of a woman, meaning if he gets between her legs, meaning her legs and arms, if he gets between her and the two circumcised parts touch, 
then the ghusl is wajib. It's obligatory. So, the ghusl is required in this case, the case of penetration or touching, even if nothing comes down. And this is something that the hadith shows as well as the consensus of the people of knowledge. Number three, من موجبات الغسل عند طائفة من العلماء إسلام الكافر فإذا أسلم الكافر وجب عليه الغسل لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أمر بعض الذي بعض الذين أسلموا أن يغتسلوا أن يغتسلوا ويرى كثير من أهل العلم أن اغتسال الكافر إذا أسلم مستحب وليس بواجب لأنه لم ينقل عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه كان يأمر به كل من أسلم فيحمل الأمر به على الاستحباب جمعا بين العدلة والله أعلم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته نفيو Now, and the third condition, the third thing that necessitates ghusl is with some of the scholars or a group from the scholars is when a person becomes Muslim, when a person embraces Islam, when the kafir becomes Muslim. He has to make a ghusl. And this is because the Prophet wasallam, he ordered some of those who embraced Islam to make a complete body wash. So, many of the people of knowledge, they saw, it was their opinion, that the ghusl of the kafir when he embraced Islam was desirable, mustahab. And not wajib. Because the Prophet Sallallahu it wasn't narrated upon him that he ordered everyone who embraced Islam to make a ghusl. So in this case, they consider it to be something that is desirable or liked. And this is uh, bringing together or yeah, we say bringing together the proofs and Allah knows best. Basically combining between the proofs. Because the Prophet وسلم, ordered some people to do it, if it's not wajib, then it's at least desirable because it's something that he did. And because he didn't order everyone to do it, we can't say that it's outright wajib, but at least we can say that it's desirable. Arabia. Number four, من موجبات الغسل الموت فيجب تغسيل الميت غير الشهيد في المعركة فإنه لا يغسل وتفاصيل ذلك تأتي في أحكام الجناز إن شاء الله. The fourth condition or the fourth obligator is death. Death. So if a person dies, then he should be washed. A ghusl should be performed for the one who dies except for the martyr, the one who dies on the battlefield. The one who dies on the battlefield. He or she is not washed. And the details concerning this, these rulings will come in the chapter dealing with funeral rites. Okay, number five and number six. Number five and number, number six. من موجبات الغسل الحيض والنفاس لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإذا أقبلت حيضتك فضع الصلاة وإذا أذبرت فاغسلي عنك الدم ثم صلي وقوله تعالى فإذا تطهرنا يعني 
الحيدة يتطهرنا بالاقتتال بعد انتهاء الحيض Number five and number six is the one who is menstruating and the one who has postnatal bleeding. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sis. The one who is menstruating are on a menstrual cycle and the one having postnatal bleeding. Then these people have to make ghusl. And the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when your menstrual cycle begins, then do not pray. Leave off the prayer. And when it is finished, then make ghusl. Wash away the blood. Make ghusl. And then pray. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, in uh, Surah Baqarah, Ayah 222, let me read the whole Ayah to you. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيضُ كُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ فَاتَّزِلُوا نِسَاءً نعم فاعتزلوا النساء في المحيض ولا تقربوهن حتى يطهرن فإذا تطهرن فاعتوهن من حيث أمركم الله إن الله يحب التوابين ويحب المتطهرين الله سبحانه وتعالى يسأل ويسألونك عن المحيض كل هو أذى فاعتزلوا النساء في المحيض They ask you concerning menstruation menstruation Say, it is harm. It is harmful. So keep away from wives. Stay away from your wives during their menstrual cycle. And do not approach them until they are pure. And when they have purified themselves, then come to them from wherever Allah has ordained for you. Indeed, Allah, he loves those who constantly turn back to him in repentance, and he loves those who purify themselves. So Baqarah, Ayah 222. So, a woman should stay away from the salah at this time, and there should be no relations between husbands and wives during the menstrual cycle. Wasifatul ghusli al Now, we're going to get into how the ghusl is performed. Now we're going to get into how the ghusl is performed. First, an yanwiya بقلبه, and yanwiya بقلبه, that a person brings the intention in his in his heart, his or her, her uh, his or her, his or her heart. A person makes the intention in his or her heart. ثم يسمي ويغسل يديه ثلاثا ويغسل وجه فرج. نعم. ثم يسمي ويغسل يديه ثلاثا ويغسل فرجه. Then a person says بسم الله بسم الله wash the hands three times then wash the private parts. Wash the hands then the private parts. ثم يتوضع وضوءا كاملا then make a complete wudu. So a person makes the intention says bismillah, washes the hands, then the private parts, then makes a complete wudu. ثُمَّ يَحْثِ الْمَاءَ عَلَى رَأْسِهِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتٍ يَرَوِّي أُصُولَ شَعْرِهِ Then a person pours water on the head three times. Then a person pours water or allows the water to run over the head three times. Like if one is in the shower, put his head in the water and let the water go three times, making sure that the water touches the roots, that it touches the scalp. ثم يعم بدنه بالغسل ويدلق بدنه بيديه then a person then a person wets the entire body they put water on the body starting with the right side of the body and you make sure that the water touches every part of the body the right side and then the left side 
والمرأة الحائض أو النفاس أو النفساء ينقض رأسها للغسل من الحيض والنفاس تنقض رأسها نعم وأما الجنابة وأما الجنابة فلا تنقضه حين تقصير لها بمشقة التقرار ولكن يجب عليها أن تروي أصول شعرها بالماء So as for the woman who is coming off of her menstrual cycle Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh khalila The woman who is coming off of her menstrual cycle or postnatal bleeding then she should wet her hair completely meaning if she has something in her hair she should let her hair down she should let her hair down and wet her scalp completely and this is not something that has to be done in the ghusl of janaba for example after having relations because of the difficulty in having to repeat it so she only has to do this after her menstrual cycle or postnatal bleeding when she wants to make ghusl she has to take her hair down but if it's something that's done for you know sexual defilement or something like that something that may occur more frequently then she doesn't have to let her hair down so long as the water uh, touches her head. And when we say hair, we mean scalp. So it can be between the braids or whatever the case may be, as long as the water touches the scalp. وَيَجِبُ عَلَى الْمُقْتَسِلِ رَجُلًا كَانَ أَوْ امْرَأَةً أَنْ يَتَفَقَّدَ أُصُولَ شَعْرِهِ وما غاب نبرنه وما تحتها وما تحت حلقه وابطيه وسرته وطي رقبتيه وإن كان لابسا ساعة أو خاتما فإنه يحركهما ليصل الماء إلى ما تحتهما So for the one who's making ghusl whether it be a man or a woman they should make sure that the water uh, completely touches the head and scalp like we mentioned and the entire body the entire body paying attention to that which is up under the neck up under the neck all over the neck and chin up under the beard the armpits even inside the navel and the backs of the knees every part of the body should be washed it should be washed. And if a person is wearing a watch or a ring, then they should remove them so that the water reaches what is beneath them. وَهَكَذَا يَجِبُ أَنْ يَحْتَمَّ بِإِزْبَاغِ الْغُسْلِ بِحَيْطُ لَا يَبْقَ مِنْ بَرْنِهِ شَيْءٌ لَا يَسِلُ إِلَيْهِ الْمَاءِ وَقَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم تَحْدَ كُلِّ شَعْرَةٍ جَنَابَ فَاغْسِلُ الشَّعْرَةٍ وَنْقُلْ بَشَرْ وَرَاهُ أَبُوْ دَاوُودْ وَالْتِرْمِذِي So, a person should pay special attention and take care to make a perfect ghusl, to make a complete and perfect ghusl, so that no part of the body should remain untouched, meaning by water, that the water should reach every part of the body. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, under every hair, or every strand of hair, there's janab. So you have to wash everything. Everything. So wash your hair and clean your body, your skin. And this has been narrated by Abu Dawood and at Tirmidhi. وَلَا يَنْبَغِ لَهُ أَنْ يُسْوِفَ فِي بِصَبِّ الْمَاءِ فَالْمَشْرُوعُ تَقْلِيلُ الْمَاءِ مَعَ الْإِزْبَاقِ فقد كان صلى الله عليه وسلم يتوضع بالمد ويقتصل ويقتصل بالصاع فينبغي الاقتداء به تقليل الماء وعلم الإسراف. And it is a must 
that a person doesn't waste water, that he shouldn't be wasteful. And it's legislated to use a little bit of water along with completion and perfection. And the Prophet wasallam used to make uh, wudu with a little bit of water like this and he would make the ghusl with a saw using this type of measurement. So it is a must that we follow him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in everything, and particularly this issue of using a little bit of water and not being wasteful. كَمَا يَجِبُ عَلَى الْمُغْتَسِلِ أَنْ يَسْتَتِرُ فَلَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ يَغْتَسِلَ عُرِيَانًا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ لِحَدِيثِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيِّيٌ 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 سَتِّيرُ يحب الحياء والستر فإذا اغتسل أحدكم فليستتر وراه أبو داود والنسائي Just as it is a must it is a must that the one making ghusl covers himself that he makes sure that he covers himself it is not permissible for one to make ghusl in a way that other people are able to see him. Like for example we see at some bath houses or at the gym or at you know places like that where men they go in the restroom and they shower in front of other men or women likewise. This is impermissible. And in the hadith the Prophet says Inna Allah hayyun satir yuhibbul hayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shy and shielding. And he loves modesty, shyness, and screening. So if any one of you makes a ghusl, then he should screen himself. Rahu Abu Dawu and Nasai. من الحدث الأكبر أمانة من جملة الأمانات التي بين العبد وبين ربه يجب عليه أن يحافظ عليه. And this ghusl from the major ritualistic impurities is a trust. It's a trust from the general trust that is between the slave and his lord. So it is a must that you preserve these trusts. وَأَنْ يَحْتَمَّ بِأَحْكَامِهِ لِيُؤَدِّيَهُ عَلَى الْوَجْحِ الْمَشْرُوعِ And it is a must that you preserve them, that you're diligent upon them, and you take care. You be concerned with their rulings so that you can perform them in the correct legislated manner. وَمَا أَشْكَنَ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَحْكَامِهِ وَمُوجِبَاتِهِ سَعَلَ عَنْهُ And that which becomes problematic for a person, that which concerns him from the rulings connected to this thing and that which uh, obligates or necessitates it, then he should ask about it. وَلَا يَمْنَعُهُ الْحَيَاءُ مِنْ ذَلِكُ And shyness should not prevent him from that. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَحْيِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Because Allah is not shy from the truth. فَالْحَيَاءُ الَّذِي يَمْنَعُ يَمْنَعُ صَاحِبُهُ مِنَ السُّوَالِ عَنْ أُمُورِ دِينِهِ هَيَاءٌ مَذْمُومٌ Because the shyness that prevents one from asking about the affair, the affairs of his religion, then this is a shyness. This is a type of shyness that is dispraised. وَهُوَ بْجُبْنُ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيُطَبِّطُ بِهِ الْإِنسَانِ عن الاستكمال دينه ومعرفة ما يلزمه من أحكامه. نعم. Did I miss anything? Questions? I'm sorry. I normally check. I don't think that I saw anything. Okay. Okay. 
this particular type of shyness, it is from shaitan. It's a sort of cowardness, uh, cowardice. And it's something that prevents the person from perfecting his religion and knowing what is made or what has been made obligatory upon him from rulings. وَأَمْرُ tahara عَظِيمٌ And the affair of purification, at tahara is magnificent, it's tremendous, it's a serious matter. وَالتَّفْرِيطُ فِي شَأْنِهَا خَطِيرٌ لِأَنَّهَا تَتَرَدَّبُ عَلَيْهَا صِحَّةُ الصَّلَاةِ الَّتِي هُوْ أَهِيَ عُمُورُ الْإِسْلَامِ It's very important. And to neglect it, uh, to be neglectful, in its um, in its status, to try and diminish its status is something very dangerous, because the correctness of the prayer is built upon it, and the prayer is the pillar of Islam. It is the pillar of Islam. It is what Islam stands upon. It's the foundation of Islam. So we shouldn't be careless as it relates to the issue of purification. It's something magnificent. It's something magnificent. Now, it's something magnificent. And to be neglectful therein is extremely dangerous. The religion is built upon it. The deen is built upon it. The correctness of the salah is built upon it. And we know that the salah is the pillar of Islam. نسأل الله لنا ولجميع المسلمين البصيرة في ديننا في ديننا والإخلاص له في القول والعمل. نعم. When the two uncircumcised parts touch, then the ghusl is wajib for the man and the woman. They both have to make ghusl at that point. They both have to make ghusl at that point. Any more questions? Let me check the phones. No questions. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we'll pick up tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be dealing with the issue of at-tayammum. At-tayammum. Making purification with dirt or sand or dust. Dry ablution. Subhanaka lahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atuhu ilayk. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته